What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to your boy's calculus tutorials. Now, you might be thinking, who is this man and can I date him? And the second thing that you might be thinking is, why is he teaching calculus? Well, I know your situation. You're a first year engineering student and you just saw calculus on your schedule and you're probably doing this. So I'm here to help. Now, let's go discuss the first thing that comes to mind when calculus is involved, and that is limits. But first, let's talk about functions. Basically, functions are converters from input x to output y or f of x, uh, by doing this by substitution. So for example, f of x equals x squared plus 2x. We can see in the table there the range of values that we get when we substitute x. So for example, x equals negative 1. We get f of x is equal to also negative 1. Uh, f of x, uh, x equals 0 f of x equals 0, x equals 1, f of x equals 3, and x equals 2, f of x equals 8, and so on, and so on, and so on. And this is the graphical representation of x squared plus 2x uh, as plotted in decimals. Now, uh, let's have a crash course in substitution. Basically, we have a function here, f of x plus, uh, equals x squared plus 2x. Uh, substituting x equals 2, we get f of 2 equals 2 squared plus 2 times 2. We can evaluate this to be 4 plus 4, which is 8. Now, how about f of 0? I'll give you a moment to think about it. Now, substituting 0 into x, we can get 0 squared plus 2 times 0. Uh, this is 0 plus 0, which is, of course, as we all know, 0. Now, how about f of 3? I'll give you a moment. Now, let's substitute uh, 3 into x, so we get 3 squared plus 2 times 3. We can evaluate this to be 9 plus 6. This is 15, and that is f of 3. Now, let's review the concept of going to somewhere. When you say you're going somewhere, for example, you call your mom and you say, Hey mom, I'm going to school now. Yeah. See you later. Love you. Bye. When do you say that? Do you say that when you're at school? No, you don't. You don't say you're going to school when you're at school. You say that when you're somewhere else, going to school. So, for example, maybe you're on your trip, uh, on the bus, on the train, on a jeepney, whatever. Maybe, maybe you're still at home and you're still going to school, but you're not at school yet. That's going to be important later on. So, remember, keep that in mind. Now, let's talk about limits. The definition of the limit is the behavior of a function as the input x goes to a particular value. All right? When going somewhere, you're not there yet. That will come important later. Now, this is a typical limit function. You can read this as the limit of a function x squared plus 2x as x goes to 2. What we need is the behavior of the function as x goes to 2, all right? So when x goes to 2, what does the function go to? Where does it go? We don't need the value of the function as x equals 2. So it's not really substitution. We're trying to find out where it actually goes. This is the tabular representation of the limit. Now, on the, on the, on the up, we can see uh, values of x as uh, 0, 1, 1.5, 1.9, 1.99, 1.99. 1 Basically, we're going closer to 2, but not quite there. So let's observe the values. 0, 3, 5.25, 7.41, 7.9401, 7.9940, dot, dot, dot. And can you see a, a pattern? Can you see somewhere we're going? Where are we going in uh, f of x? Now let's go from this one on the bottom. Uh, 3, 2.5, 2.1, 2.01, 2.001. 2 uh, we're going closer to 2 in that instance. So what are the values uh, f of x going to? Uh, 15, 11.25, 8.61, 8.0601, 8.0060. Can you see a pattern down? From the left, f of x gets closer to 8 as x gets closer to 2. And from the right, f of x also gets closer to 8 as x gets closer to 2. So we can say that the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared plus 2x is equal to 8. Because both sides get closer and closer and closer to 8. Now this is the graph of the limits. Now, we can see here 
that from the left side, it actually goes to this uh, as x goes to 2. Right? This is x goes to 2, and that is where it's going. Now from the right, it's actually also going to towards there. So both sides agree on where it's going. From the left, the function goes to 8. From the right, the function also goes to 8, and we can see that the limit is 8. In summary, the limit as x of x squared plus 2x as x goes to 2 is 8, because the values get closer to 8 as input x gets closer to 2. But wait, you might ask, isn't this just substitution? The limit of x squared plus 2x as x goes to 2 is 8, right? We can also say f of 2 is equals to 8. Well, no, but yes. Most of the time, solving limits require substitution, and the answers are indeed valid. <laughs> that means that when we solve limits, we do substitute the values in. For example, we do substitute x equals 2 to solve the limit. But it is not substitution. Keep that in mind. Because we're not trying to find the value as x equals 2. We're trying to find the value of where it goes as x goes to 2. We're just doing a shortcut, basically, when we substitute uh, x equals 2. Now, here are some examples. The first one is the limit of 2x squared plus 4x plus 3 as x goes to 3. Let's try solving that using a uh, substitution. Because uh, we can indeed use substitution to find the limit. Uh, for this is going to be 2 times 3 squared plus 4 times 3 plus uh, 3. Uh, 3 squared is 9 times 2, so that's 18 plus 12 plus 3. This is going to be 33. Now the second one, the limit as x goes to negative 1 of x squared minus 2x plus 1. We can also substitute this, uh, negative 1 squared minus 2 times negative 1 plus 1. This is 1 minus uh, plus 2, sorry, plus 1. This is equal to 4. We can say the limit is 4. Now, here are some exercises you can do. You can use uh, substitution tricks in order to solve this. But remember, it is not substitution. You're not doing substitution. You're just, you know, using substitution to find the answer. Now, let's substitute the negative 3 here. But remember, again, remember, we're not substituting. So, negative 3 plus 4 over 2 times negative 3 minus 9. This is 4 minus 3 is 1. Then this is negative 6 plus 9. This is 3. So the limit is 1 third. Now how about this one? The limit of 1 over x plus 2 as x goes to 1, uh, we can substitute that. Uh, 1 plus 2. 1 over 3. And that's the answer. 1 over 3. Uh, remember, remember, remember again, guys, we are not substituting. I have to say this again and again. We are not substituting these values. We're just using these to find the answer quicker, you know. Next, let's discuss when the limit doesn't exist. Now, evaluating uh, the limit of 1 over x as x goes to 0, we get, we get 1 over 0, which is undefined. But we're not finding 1 over 0. It's not exactly 0. We're trying to find where it goes as x goes to 0. Now, let's look at the graph here. From the left, it actually goes down, 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 down towards negative infinity. And from the right, it actually goes up, 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 up as it goes to positive infinity. It goes in two different directions. One is up, one is down. Uh, therefore, we can say that the limit doesn't exist or d n e. Next. This is the tabular representation of the function from earlier. From the negative side, we can see that it approaches zero, uh, just negative, you know. So, but the value actually goes uh, down, down, down towards negative infinity. While the value from here goes, while it goes down, it actually goes up, up, up towards positive infinity. Uh, from the so from the left, f of x decreases to negative infinity, and from the right, f of x increases to positive infinity. We can say the limit doesn't exist as the left and right disagree on where it goes. Now, how about this one? The limit of f of x as x goes to 3 
such that f of x equals 2 if x is less than or equal to 3, and f of x is equal to 2x minus 6 if x is greater than 3. Now let's look at the graph. From the left, this is the this is the the function. So it goes to this point, which is 2. And from the right, it actually goes to here, to 0. The left and the right disagree on where it goes. Therefore, the limit does not exist. Here's a tabular representation of it again. Let's look at this. From the left, which is the uh, this one, uh, never, never mind that negative sign, uh, it goes 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. So it, when it gets closer to 3, it just goes to 2. But from the other side, it goes to 0. So from the left, f of x approaches 2, and from the right, f of x approaches 0, and they disagree on where it approaches. Therefore, we can say it does not exist. Here are some examples. Now, how about this one? Let's evaluate it first. This is 1 over 0. That's undefined, but we don't care about the exact value. We care about where it actually goes. So from the negative side, we have to do the tabular method now because... Uh, it's undefined. So from the left side is negative, so negative 1, negative 0 0.1, negative 0 0.001. So this goes, uh, the f of x is 1, then what is this, 1, 100, and then this one is 10,000, I think. So it goes to towards positive infinity as, uh, as it gets closer and closer to 0, all right? How about the other side, which is... 0 0.001, the positive one, 0 0.1, and then 1, and whatever. So this goes to 0, that, that direction. All right, so this is 1, this is 100, this is something like 10,000 maybe, or 100,000, I forgot. Uh, since it goes to, towards positive infinity as it goes to 0, they agree on where it goes. It goes towards positive infinity. Therefore, we can say that the, func the limit is actually going to positive infinity. That's our actual answer. It's not undefined or doesn't exist. It actually goes towards positive infinity. Amazing. Uh, the graph actually looks kind of like this. So, yeah, it makes sense, right? Next, the limit of f of x such that f of x equals 1 over 2x when x is less than negative 2 and f of x equals x cubed when x is greater than negative 2. Now, let's try substituting it first. Maybe there is something about that. So this is uh, 1 over 2 times negative 2. This is 1 over negative 4. So f of x approaches uh, negative 1 over 4 uh, from this side. Now from the other side, it approaches uh, negative 2 cubed, which is negative 8. It approaches negative 8. Uh, the left and the right disagree. Therefore, the limit does not exist. Here's some exercise for you all. I'll wait. You can do it. Alright, have you done it yet? Let's do it. So, substituting this is we get 1 over 0. That's undefined. Uh, we don't care about that. Uh, let's, let's, let's try the table. Uh, this is 2. So, from the left, we get 1, 1 1.5, 1.9, 1 1.9999. Right. From the right, we get 2.0001, 2 2.1, 2 maybe 3. Let's, let's have those values. Let's see where it actually goes. So from the left, we get uh, negative 1. How about this? Negative 2, negative 10, negative something like 1,000. How about this one? We go 1,000. 10, uh, 2, and 1. So from here, it goes towards positive infinity, and from here, it goes towards negative infinity. Therefore, they disagree on where they go. Therefore, the limit doesn't exist. Now, how about this one? Now, sorry for the space. The limit g of x, such that g of x is equal to 3x plus 3 when x is less than 2, and g of x equals x squared plus 5 when x is greater than or equal to 2. Let's try substituting it first. 3 times 2 plus 3 is equal to 6 plus 3, which is equal to 9. How about the other one, which is 2 squared plus 5, which is 4 plus 5 equals 9. 
Now the left and the right agree on where it goes, which is 9. So we can say that the limit is equal to 9. It exists because both sides agree on where it goes. Now let's talk about indeterminate forms. Well, the indeterminate forms are 0 over 0, infinity over infinity, 0 times infinity, 0 to the power 0, infinity to the power 0, 1 to the power infinity, and infinity minus infinity. What does that mean? Well, if you evaluated a limit and it results to either of these, the limit is said to be indeterminate. It's not undefined. It's indeterminate. We need more work to find the true limit. Now, for example, let's try evaluating this first one. Uh, it's 2 minus 2 over 2 squared minus 5 times 2 plus 6. This is, the top one is 0. The bottom one is 4 minus 10 plus 6. That is 0. 0 over 0 is an indeterminate form. Therefore, we have to do more work to find the actual limit. Now, what is the actual limit? Well, how can we refine this further? How, how can I do that? Well, let's try factoring the bottom one first. I think we can factor it out. So, uh, the top cannot be factored, so it's just x minus 2. How about the bottom? I think uh, we can use uh, binomials and whatever. So, how about, how about that? Uh, 1 times 2 is 2, then 1 times 3 is 3, and then a minus two, negative 2 minus 3 is equal to negative 5. So, we can say that this is x minus 2 and x minus 3. And then, we can cancel out the x minus 2 uh, from here. Uh, let's not forget the, the limit, of course. And then, the limit as x goes to 2 of 1 over x minus 3 is our new function. So, let's evaluate it from there. What is 1 over 2 minus 3? That is going to be negative 1. That's the actual limit. Now, the next one. Let's evaluate it first. 2 squared minus 2 minus 2 over uh, 2 squared plus 7 times 2 plus 6. This one is, uh, the top one is 0 and the bottom one is 4 plus 14 plus 6. That is 24. Well, this is an indeterminate, so we can just say this, that the limit goes to 0. Again, guys, the indeterminate form is just 0 over 0 and what we discussed earlier. So, when 0 over 0 doesn't appear, it's not indeterminate at all. Here's some exercise you can do. I know you can do it. Try it. <laughs> now, let's do this. Let's evaluate this first. 2 times 5 minus 10 over... Uh, 5 squared plus 2 times 5 minus 35. 2 times 5 is 10 minus 10 equals 0. 5 squared is 25 plus 2 times 5 is uh, 10. 225 plus 10 is 35 minus 35 equals 0. That's indeterminate. We have to do more work. So let's factorize the top. We can factorize that to be 2 then x minus 5. On the bottom, let's try solving it using binomial stuff. Uh, you can use any uh, formula you want you want uh, in solving this, but I prefer using this method instead. So it's x minus 5 and x plus 7. Then not forget the limit. Uh, we can cancel x minus 5 out to get the limit as x goes to 5 of 2 over x plus 7. Uh, su substitute it, so that's 2 over 5 plus 7 is just 12, 1 over 6. And that is the answer. How about this one? Let's try solving it. Let's try uh, negative 1 cubed plus 3 times negative 1 squared plus 3 times negative 1. Uh, we're running out of space. Plus 1 over uh, negative 1 squared plus 3 negative 1 plus 2. Now this one, 1 plus 1 negative 1 plus 3 minus 3 plus 1. That is 0 over 1 minus 3 plus 2, that's also 0, in the term and form, we have to do more work. Now, the top one looks familiar. This is actually x plus 1 cubed over x plus 1, uh, x plus 2. Let's just cut to the chase. Uh, we can cancel this out. This becomes squared. So, 
uh, the pesky x plus 1 on the bottom is gone. So we can evaluate the limit as x goes to negative 1. So negative 1 plus 1 squared over negative 1 plus 2. This is 0 over 1. This is equal to 0 and that is the actual limit. That's all for now. I'll see you later.